Welcome back guys. So in this session, uh, we're going to be covering um, 3D features and how to work with components, assemblies, reference management. So in the last session, we learned about sketches. So let's create a couple or let's just create one. Let's go here, here, and three and five. There we go. Now we have created a sketch and it's nested under sketches. Now what we will do is bring this 2D feature into 3D. And one of the most common tools to use for that is extrude. So I can specify an extrude dimension, two inches. And there are a couple other options in extrude, but I would encourage you to explore them on your own. But for now, this should be good. So extrude is a basic feature and extrude can be really powerful and you can use that to create a lot of different shapes in CAD environments. But uh, there are certain modifications you can make on top of a 3D feature. So the two such modifications we're gonna learn about are fillets and chamfers. So we have a fillet here. And I can set that to whatever curvature I want. So I'm gonna say a two inch radius and as you guys can see there's a fillet on that edge now we can also chamfer the edge so if i come over here sometimes it helps to close your data panel to visualize more of your model i can do a chamfer here here and here and for this i'm going to go with 0.5 and there we go so as you guys can see we now have a chamfer on these three sides and a fillet on this side so these are some of the modifications. Uh, another 3D feature that was going to be used quite often are holes. Now usually you can make a hole anywhere. So if you make a hole here, you can position it anywhere you like. But most people have a specific location where they want their hole. So sketches are really useful in achieving that specific location. So let's say I have a hole that is 45 degrees from here and about one inch down. So let me just start a line from here Let's type in one inch, hit enter. As you can see, this is not angularly constrained and I can create an angular constraint between this and this and set that to 45. Now I have a point and I could use that point as a hole location. So we go right there and within holes, we have a whole bunch of different options. Again, I expect encourage you to explore it yourself so we're just going to look at a countersunk hole so it just wants to know how wide our top of the countersink is so i'm going to specify that at one inch and the diameter i'm going to specify at 0.5 and the rest i'm just going to keep standard and click ok and as you guys can see now there is a hole in the model these are effectively the most basic 3D features you need to do, know to do any component. Obviously, there are a lot more. And uh, another one that I think I should cover, especially useful in lathe, is Revolve. So I'm going to do another sketch. Uh, let's say I do a sketch on this plane. And I set a line. And I define that line to be... 1.5 inches and maybe I'll make a feature from there. Let's go for a circle one inch and then let's define another line. So I'm going to make a line like that. Set the dimension to three inches and finish sketch. And in Revolve, all you really do is select a profile. In this case, this is the profile I'm selecting and you can select an axis along which to rotate. So right now it's doing a 360 degree rotation. I can make it cut. I can make it join where it will merge with the existing body. I can make it intersect. So only the portion that is intersecting between the two body remains, but I'm gonna go with cut. And there we go. So now we have a small cut in the bottom. So that's how 
extrude, revolve, holes, fillets, and chamfers work. Do explore the other options. Sometimes you can achieve a feature with just one click instead of 10 clicks using extrude. So do get go through and explore the different options at hand. The other thing I want to cover in this session is the concept of uh, assemblies and reference management. So this is going to be a little tricky, but is actually quite important for your use of the center resources. So I have a file and it's unsaved currently. So let's save that first. And let's call this part. So I want you to look at your browser and try to understand a few things. If you see there's a cube here and this cube is indicating that this is a part file or in Fusion it's called a component file. Now I'm going to create another file and it's not going to be a component file. So let's go here. I'm going to save this as assembly. Now as it stands, this is still a component file because we can see a cube here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new component, part one. And new component, part two. So you guys must have seen the moment I created the first part, the cube changed into a stack of cubes and this is an indication that this is an assembly and the assembly is effectively a collection of components that are put together now when you are designing uh, for the most part you can design directly if your component uh, if your design is simple and there's just one piece but if you're going to have screws you're going to have bolts, you're going to have other things that come together and you want to design everything in one environment, in one file, you need to make sure that you create a new component called part one, then design it. So for example, I'm going to just make a uh, torus on this and I'm gonna give it a gap of two inches and a diameter of two inches. And then I'm going to go to this part, activate it, and I'm going to create a cylinder. And I'm going to give it a diameter of one inch and a height of two. And now I have two components and I can cycle between the components by activating them or I can look at the assembly as a whole. So now these are the two pieces and I have a complex design and I want things to fit together. So you guys can see right now these are free floating and can go anywhere. So the first thing I will do is I'm going to join and joints are a way of putting components together. Join this to the origin of the assembly. So there we go. As you guys can see now that there's a joint and things aren't moving, but this is not joined to anything, so it can still move around. I'm gonna hide the origin and the joint so it doesn't look ugly. And now I'm gonna create a joint between the center of that and the center of the torus. And if I click OK, it now resolves the torus onto the top of that cylinder. And what I've effectively created is a joint assembled, uh, joint components into an assembly and when you're doing cam uh, especially uh, in the metal shop and in the wood shop you will be working with multiple components when you get to the cam stage so familiarity with uh, the concept of assembly and components is quite important now most likely if you're doing your first part ever on a CNC you will have designed your part in this fashion where you didn't create a component and you uh, effectively uh, have a single component file and you don't have an assembly. So in this case, what you don't want to do is in the part file, you import all your fixtures, your stock, all the resources that you need in order to do CAM. What you would do is create a separate file like assembly, import the different resources that you need 
and also import your own resource so I can just right click on this and say insert into current design and what you guys will see is now we have the design that we made here part v1 imported into this design called part v1 and it's here and I can put it together with the assembly now I'm just randomly joining things, but in reality, you will probably have a specific order. And now you guys can see that this component that we designed in this file has been brought into this file and is now available for use. You can see this chain link. This indicates that if I make any changes to part, so for example, if I suddenly decided that no I don't really like the fillet it's too sharp it's too big I can change the fillet to one inch and hit save and because of the fact that there was this link fusions going to complain that my model is out of date so all I really need to do is refresh the version and it will automatically adapt and update this is quite a big topic and I can speak on it for hours and hours, but these are the essential information that you really need to get started on this. Pay extra special attention to this if you're using Fusion to use CAM in our uh, metal shop and wood shop because there you will be using assemblies and you need to be familiar and comfortable with the concept of assemblies in order to be successful. That's it for this video, guys. I'll see you guys on the next one.